Here's a closer look at the underside of the chassis. When I first got this, I was more interested in the pitcher tube, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time looking at it. I know that the previous owner tried to restore it, couldn't get it to work. Uh, so, most of the caps have been replaced. It's a fairly decent job. Um, the only thing I really don't like that I found so far is in a couple instances, like down here. He must not have had the correct value on hand and put a couple in parallel. Um, and uh, which would effectively, like if you put two one microfarad in parallel, you'll end up with uh, two microfarad cap. So I'll have to double check on a schematic to see what the correct value is for these and see if these are okay. Um, but what struck me as odd is I don't f see a single replaced resistor. I can always find some bad resistors if I start checking. I especially don't like these sand resistors. This are an early form of power resistor. You generally start disintegrating, drift off value, or just burn out. Something else odd is this horizontal linearity control. Normally there would be a hole here and you would use a tuning tool like this to adjust the inductor that would be in there. Well here there's actually a lever protruding which goes to this coil, the core of this coil. And you can slide this up and down, in and out. I've never seen that before, but uh, seems like it would work okay. He did replace the two selenium rectifiers with silicon diodes. There's one here and one up in here. You should add a series resistor as well because these old rectifiers were not as efficient as modern silicon rectifiers. So to really simulate one of these properly, you should use a resistor of Oh, about 50 to 100 ohms in series with the diode. Never used wire nuts before either, but uh, I guess that'll work okay. Uh, still a few old caps in here. They call these bumblebees because they're striped like this. They may look like big resistors or look maybe a bit more modern, but really they're just old paper caps that are stuck into a plastic tube with stripes on it, and they're just as prone to failure. Yeah, one here, one here, one here, maybe a few more scattered around. So I think what I'm going to have to do is pull out the schematic, which I do have, and just start going over everything. It's going to be tedious and take, take a while, but uh, I don't think it'd be safe to just throw in some tubes and power this up, because I... Um, also found a few things like this, <laughs> a wire that was just clipped out and who knows what was supposed to be attached here. So I'd like to double check some things like that. Oh, one last interesting thing about this set. Earlier I talked about some low cost 7 inch Motorola sets, the VT71 family, and how they did not have a power transformer. The filaments were just strung in series like Christmas lights run right off the AC line and the B plus positive high voltage supply to run the set off of was derived with two selenium rectifiers just like this set and a voltage doubler off the AC line. Well so does this set. That's what these two rectifiers and uh, I believe this capacitor are used for to make the voltage doubler to make about uh, 270 volts DC right from the AC line. The reason they would do that is to save cost and to save weight. You don't need a big, bulky tra big bulky transformer. The downside of running the filaments, though, off of the AC line is if you get something like a power surge, it can blow out some of the tube filaments. And uh, worst case scenario, you can actually blow out the filament on the pitcher tube. So what this set actually has, it's a hybrid. There is a, there is a small power transformer down here, but it's only used for the filament voltages. The main power is derived from right off the AC line, so it's the best of both worlds. Transformer is about half the size it would be normally, so you get some weight and cost savings. And it protects the tube filaments from blowing out. Um, so, I think it's kind of a neat, a neat uh, compromise. Also has one of these gizmos, I've only seen these in Foco Predictors before. It's a fusistor, I think they call these, a fusible resistor. I guess this would also help with some uh, current surges in the power line. Uh, I guess 
if it would draw too much current this would burn out but if it was just a little bit too much current it would just heat up and dissipate the uh, the power surge I'll have to double check on that too I've never actually had a deal with one before it looks like it's in good shape Yeah, so I'll uh, go over this more thoroughly with the schematic and let you guys know what I find out.